I would like to officially welcome all of you to the graduation of Gray Academy's class of 2020. This is really unique, and this is uh, part two. And uh, how many of you were watching live in our first part? Anybody? We got a few hands. OK, well, the good news is you can watch this as often as you would like because it's being recorded. Um, and I do know at least we've got someone in Israel watching. So shout out to Avi Posen, who just sent me a message. So uh, if you know how to message me on WhatsApp or text and you're watching from far away, do that and I'll give you a shout out. We're really grateful to some really good weather, which we specifically ordered for this July 12th graduation, a little breeze. And uh, thank you for being patient and for understanding our need to divide our ceremony in two today. Um, not only is this our first outdoor graduation in history, but it's the first one in which we are um, it, using the public health guidelines and also the first time we've been able to have a puppy, a little dog at our ceremony. And so we're so we're so excited to be able to do that. And you know, it seems that we might do this again. Sometimes new traditions take hold. And so I thank you. So this morning, uh, you are here to honor the second half of our graduating class. And as mentioned earlier, we have many people watching live throughout the globe. I'm going to ask you to make sure that your devices are silenced. As I think you are clearly aware, we are following all of Manitoba's public health guidelines for outdoor gatherings. If you should need a washroom, you are welcome to go inside directly straight into your right past the glass doors and you will be able to use the washroom. Also, if at any time it's too hot for you, we have our wellness room available and you can watch live from inside. Um, also, our live feed will be going throughout. We have Robin Shapiro here, who is our photographer and our official photographer, so we thank her for being here and all families will get copies of our photos. And we have Andrea Ritter, our director of marketing and communications here as well, who will be doing social media if you are following already. For the families, when your child comes up to be honored, there is a special hula hoop here. We can have one person per household come and also take photos, and we invite you to do that. I also want to let you know that similar to us ushering people out at the exit, we're going to be doing that similarly at the end. Um, also, we are allowing our graduates to take home their gowns overnight until tomorrow morning so that if they want to do photo shoots with family members um, that we are able to do that um, for them. So please join me in welcoming the graduating class of 2020. Thank you to Shayla Fink, who is on keyboard. Once again, I get to officially welcome the graduating class of 2020. Joining their families are our second half of our class, who will be honored with their biographies and receiving their diploma. And guys, excellent job on the finding your seats. You did it perfectly. 
Grads, we gave you a uh, bag earlier with a drink, and since uh, the bag is no longer the bag you had under that, um, over the next five to 10 minutes, we will bring you a bottle of water so you stay hydrated, but you're welcome to take the fan that may not have been used that's in the bag. So we will do that for you. So to all of you who are here and joining us in person for the second half of our graduating ceremony, I would like to officially welcome you to Convocation 2020. We've been calling it Gray Academy Under the Sky. It's kind of under the big tent, but Gray Academy Under the Sky, we're really, we're really outside, we feel the breeze. And as I mentioned earlier, I shared an anecdote, and I'll share it again because it's, it's worth repeating. Um, no one could have predicted what happened on March 15th, and uh, my, my former teacher, Lala Shalom Paulo Marx, told me about the Ides of March, Jacob's Baba. The Ides of March, it certainly was, and uh, we took 48 hours and Gray Away was created. And it was Mrs. Botch in a quick moment, and I don't think she would have realized that her words had so much power, but in having her students in grade nine on the first day of Pesach break go outside to watch a very special phenomen phenomena in the sky that night, she reminded them that even though they were all separated, we were all together under the same sky. And for our graduating class, we know that the last few months of high school was not as they had imagined. And certainly, I believe they will tell you themselves that somehow through the magic of what Gray Academy is, not a building, but a school and a community, they did feel connected under the same sky. And here we are for the most unique convocation we have ever had. And I wanna thank Mrs. White for the privilege again for leading this convocation. And I wanna thank our graduates for going into part two and ensuring that each and every one of our graduates is honored in a very special way. To get us started for each of you live in person, I will now call up our students who will be doing prayers, and hopefully you still have your prayers, and uh, come up and grab your microphones and come to the podium. אלוהינו ואלוהי אבותינו ואימותינו, אנחנו עומדים על סף תקופה חדשה בחיינו. תנחנו לטובה ולברכה, לסיסון ולשמחה, לפרנסה ולכלכלה, ולישוע ולאתגר, לאיפוק ולנחמה. תנחנו למצוא את הנשיות שבנו. תן לנו את היכולות לחזק את עצמנו, משפחתנו וחברינו, ולשרת את קהילתנו בכבוד. תראה לנו דרכים לתיקון עולם. תנהלו לחיים ולשלום, שנכיר בחסרוניות, תן לנו כוח להתמודד עם שטפנו, תלמדנו כיצד לסלוח לעצמנו ולאחרים. אלוהינו, אתה לימדת אותנו להכיר את חילוף הזמן, תן לנו להכיר במדע הזה שאת כושר להריח את חיינו. תבוא התקופה הזאת עלינו ועל כל עם בית ישראל לטובה ולברכה, ונאמר אמן. Thank you, Maya. We're going to do the English prayer towards the end, so we get to encapsulate a prayer at the beginning and a prayer towards the end. We have a number of special guests here with us this morning, um, and I would like to just acknowledge uh, Sean Shore, the president of the Winnipeg Board of Jewish Education. Please stand and wave. And as mentioned earlier, Sean is concluding his fifth year as president of the Winnipeg Board of Jewish Education this November as the board will be celebrating very shortly 40 years since its inception in 1980. In your program, you will have a letter from Sean um, 
with some greetings from the Winnipeg Board of Jewish Education. I want to thank Sean for all of his hard work and to all of the board members who ensure that Gray Academy is viable today and for the future. I would also like to welcome Laurel Malkin, past president of the Jewish Federation of Winnipeg, for being here on behalf of the Federation. Yes, you please clap. Let's have some fun. This is, this is, this is an exciting day. <laughs> The Jewish Federation of Winnipeg has been supporting Jewish day school education in Winnipeg for decades and decades, and it allows us to make our Jewish education accessible to all families and to make sure that we can keep it affordable. Today, we were unable to have someone representing the Jewish Foundation of Manitoba, but in your program, you will find a letter from Richard Yaffe, the president of the Jewish Foundation of Manitoba, along with a letter from Joel Laser, the president of the Jewish Federation of Winnipeg. To set the tone for the official part of our ceremony, I will like to welcome our Judaic Studies Advisor, Ruth Shrafi, to start with a Dvar Torah. Vokratov and welcome. It's great seeing you all here. So, why do bad things happen to good people? Why is it that after 12 to 15 years of studying hard at school and looking forward to a well-deserved graduation, COVID hits, throws the country into lockdown and your plans out the window? What does Judaism have to say about life's curveballs and the best way to deal with them? First, here is the explanation with which the rabbis do not agree. In the Talmud, Rabbi Yochanan states that if a person is overcome by a sudden illness or hardship, he should accept it as yesurin shel ahava, a punishment out of love. God is using the suffering to teach you something. Well, three pages down, Rabbi Yochanan becomes sick himself. And his student asks, how do you feel? Well, I do not like the suffering, nor that the lesson that it is supposed to teach, he answers. Well, at least he's honest. Here is why that theory does not work. Curveballs are random. Why should a class of 2020 need to learn a lesson? What about the previous classes? Why should this person experience illness and that person not? The second rabbinic explanation focuses on the randomness of suffering. If all our actions were always followed by their just reward, no exceptions, what would that mean? Well, most of us would quickly learn that if we do good things, we receive good in return. Our lives will become a balanced accounting book. Ensure that you always have more credit than debit. But if there is randomness in the system, we cannot always be certain of the certain of the result of our actions. If we are suddenly hit by something that we could not possibly have seen coming or could have prevented, by something that overturns all our plans, then the question becomes, how are we going to respond to the challenges that hit us? If we get thrown a curveball, it is okay to feel upset because it hurts. We would be keep doing good even if we may not get the result we want or should we do good because it is the right thing to do. Judaism acknowledges that the randomness of curveballs is no easy matter at all, but it teaches us to focus on our choice of response. We can keep doing the right thing because it is the right thing to do. So, if COVID prevents us from having a regular convocation ceremony, we will organize a different one, but we will have a convocation ceremony. And Mrs. White will figure out a dinner and dance too. Look at Israel. We learn to grow watermelons in the desert, revive the language, and are the second country with the most startups on the NASDAQ in New York. And all this while under constant threats from our enemies. Despite the curveballs, you will continue to do good. You will go after your dreams because it is the right thing to do. And that's a value that you learned here at Gray Academy. I want to congratulate all of you with a huge Mazal Tov. I wish you and your families lots of bracha and hatzlacha and kol tuv. All the best. Thank you. Thank you, Ruth. We got a shout out from Portland, Oregon. I believe that's the Stoller family came on my phone. So hello to Portland, Oregon. And uh, this is kind of fun, actually. So if you have any 
anybody watching from strange places, slip me a piece of paper or I'll make sure to uh, say hello. I would like all of our parents to please stand. If you are a parent of a graduate, please stand. And for all of us to please join us in a round of applause to thank all of our parents. Thank you for being our partners. Thank you for your partnership throughout the journey from junior kindergarten or whether that journey began in high school. And as we learned over the last couple of months, your partnership with us is vital um, and has allowed us to reach this milestone today. And I wanna thank you for choosing Gray Academy as your choice of schools for your children's education. To all of our educators, some who are standing in the trees over there, if I can ask all of the educators in the various forested areas to please stand so I can recognize you. We have many that are here today. All of our staff and teachers, please stand all around. I wanna thank them not only for their contributions today and to um, getting this graduation ceremony put together, but I wanna thank each and every one of them for the impact that they had not only this year, but the many teachers. Uh, we have uh, 50 teachers and we have a faculty and staff of close to 80. Each and every one of those individuals deserves recognition and deserves our thanks for allowing us to do what we do every day, whether we're in the building or whether we are at home. So I wanna thank them. Mrs. White will now have an opportunity to bring greetings to the graduating class. And both of us have the interesting challenge of somewhat doing it twice, but also changing it up a little bit. And I wanna thank Mrs. White, and I'll thank her again shortly um, for all of the details and the commitment to support our grads and having a convocation in person. So without further ado, Mrs. White. Lots of mics. So, uh, Ms. Binder, you didn't tell me, though, we had to change it up the second time around. So, I don't know how much different this will be. Welcome, everybody. I will tell you this is the one graduation in my entire career I have been most excited for and looking forward to. And I'm so glad we're here today uh, celebrating together. So, the principal speech. I'm up here thinking that whatever I say has to be insightful, um, concise, with a little bit of humor thrown in. It's standard practice to start with some catchy quote and you build your whole speech around that quote. Well, I'm not going to follow any structure this year, mainly because this year is like no other that we've had before. It's been a pretty intense couple of months, to say the least, but we are together today. Finally, the class of 2020 made it very clear how important it was for them to have their celebration alongside their family and their peers. This is a very special moment and you deserve it. When we're preparing for graduation, we have staff and special guests and they work on committees and they look at uh, the awards and the application for awards and through the use of rubrics they come up with the recipients every year We have a selection of awards that are non-application awards and those happen in a unique way So we have all the teachers we sit around in a big room and we go grad by grad and we tell anecdotes and lovely stories about things that we've observed about each and every grad I really wish I could have recorded it and played it for you today. Throughout us all telling each other our anecdotes and stories, one thing that, um, I hear a phone, I've lost my phone, so I thought maybe it's mine somewhere. <laughs> so one thing that I noticed is the teachers kept going, oh really? Oh, I didn't know that. What came through loud and clear is that this is not a group that shouts from the rooftops, or they don't find a cause and they lead it from the front. Their heart is much more subtle and meaningful. 
Even when they wrote about themselves in their, for their bio outlines, I was surprised at how much was missing. And you know what was missing? A lot of their awards, maybe some of the other initiatives that they were involved with. But I want everybody here to know about this class. And I want them, I want you to know that we see you. We see you when you're reaching out to younger students in the halls or in 204. We see you when you say hello to that student in the hall that is alone. We see you when you're asking for help for a friend in trouble. We see you choosing to make positive choices, even when those choices are not always the easy ones. We see you supporting one another. Even when you've been hurt, you have reached out to support your peers. We see you taking a stand for what is right. And we see you celebrating your uniqueness, which in turn makes you the best role models for our younger students. There's no doubt in my mind that this group in front of you will blaze a path that is their own. No one else's, but their own. You all have a strong sense of self. You know who you are. You are strong in your convictions and you have a big heart. Congratulations on your graduation. I would like to take a few moments to do a few thank yous. First of all, to our parent volunteers, to Joan Marks for planning the progressive dinner down to the very last details. All that was left to do was hit play. To Hadass Eviatar, who was my right hand as we started our fundraising and who would contact me regularly asking if she could lend assistance. To Susan Buckwald, who started planning for our grad Shabbat and convocation. And Rachel Margulis, who helped with many of the plans for today's event. Thank you. A huge shout out to some of our teachers who are our grad biography writers. Ron Vanderhoeft, Heidi Crowley, Lindsay Leipzig, Nicole Bosch, and Andrew Kaplan all wrote the bios that we'll be reading out shortly. And finally, today would not have happened without the countless hours of Lori Binder and Joyce Kerr. It is mind-blowing how much those two get accomplished in a day. We thank you for ensuring that today was going to be special for everybody. Thank you. Okay, how are you guys doing? Okay, fabulous. Thank you, Mrs. White. Well. Very shortly, in a minute or two, we have a chance to hear from our students through the valedictorian speeches. And I think that to give um, something that I believe in very strongly uh, a voice is that one of our goals at Gray Academy is to ensure that our students do have a voice, not only to advocate for themselves, but to advocate for others. And with the valedictorian selection, the selection includes both staff and peers. Um, and this morning, we will be hearing in Hebrew from Jenna Buckwald and in English from Mitchell Margulis. And to get us started, we're going to bring up Hannah Garber with the English prayer. So once Hannah is finished, Jenna, I'm going to ask you to just come straight up. I'm not going to come back to the podium. Hannah, you can go and get your microphone. And following Jenna, Mitchell, you will have a chance to come up to do the English valedictorian, and in the back, we will see all of the switching of the microphones and the foam to allow us to each have our own individual mics. We're very fortunate to be able to have both a Hebrew and an English valedictory speech each and every year. 
And when Jenna uh, does do her speech in Hebrew, if you um, want to look inside your program, you will see, should you need, a translation written also by Jenna of her own speech in Hebrew. So without further ado, Hannah, I'm going to switch the mic and invite you up for the prayer. Our God and God of our fathers and mothers, we are at the threshold of a new period in our lives. Direct us towards goodness and blessing, towards gladness and joy, towards livelihood and sustenance, towards liberation and challenge, towards patience and consolation. Direct us to find the humanity within us. Give us the capability to support ourselves, our families, and our friends, and to serve our community in dignity. Show us ways to tikkun olam. Direct us towards life and peace, that we may be aware of our shortcomings. Give us strength to struggle with our aspirations. Teach us how to forgive ourselves and others. Our God, you have taught us to be aware of the changes in time. Let us regard this moment as an opportunity to evaluate our lives. May this period come to us and your entire people Israel for goodness and for blessing. And let us say amen. Gavarit Binder, Dr. Ashrafi, Gavarit White, Hamor Joyce, Morim, Mishpachat, Vechaverim. Ruchim Habaim, Latekesium, Shalkita, Alpine, Vesrim. Kshenika Tevet Ehena Omhaze, and Iloya Dat Imikratze, Mulatorium, and Muspakol, Benea Mishpacha, Vechaverim Shelanu. Kazabakulam Yoshvim, Bemerchak, Shalshisha Metarim Zemaze, O Stam Koreditze, Bekol Ram Bazum. Kshenichnas nu le beit hasefer be September le shenat halimudim ha achrana shelanu betichon lo yechal nu le damien shelo nekabel erahiz demnu la sod et mischa kasport ha acharon shelanu et festival ashirim ha acharon shelanu et seder ha pesach ha acharon shelanu vetimine ha achronim le chagi gatetichon tochniot covid nineteen ha siur ha kol ve hayinu tuchim le kabel shahaolam mishda ne le natzach. Bemeshek ha chodashim ha achronim, avarnu milhis dakel al kirot beit ha sefer, shehitra glanu kol kach lirot bemalach, arba esre ha shanim ha achronot, lilhis dakel al kirot, cheder ha shena, shelanu bimkom. Ach beota der sheba, gre academy tamid ha ta sham avarenu, hem shuv hatslichu lehis dakel kol kach maher, velev shar lanu lehaslim et chodshenu ha achronim, betsara kala vechalka kakal haev shar. Lemorenu velo horenu ha nehederim. Lo hainu kan hayom bli kol havara ha kasha, ham sirat ve asalvanu shalachem. Toda me kol halev shavatam otanu le shalev ha chashuv haze bechainu. Grey Academy tamid haita ya termistam beit sefer avarenu. Zot tamid haita mishpacha. Had sevet hu be emet echad misogo. Lo rak sheta ha morim shalanu, ele sheta gam ha mentorim ve ha shalanu. Toda shashma tam tamid shaot nasafot, shazru lanu be kol masha nachnu tichim, ve al kach shashka tam banu kol kach. Toda shaitam tamid sham bishvilenu, ve dagatam lanu gambeche beit ha sefer umechuz. Lo hainu yacholim la sodatze bila dechem. Ve eze beit sefer acher hayu, hamorim kanim slashim la kolakita, zorkim mesibat potluck le losiba. Yotzim la arachat sohoraim liknot lukula matona baati maishit. Mevakshim la shir shir shkatav tam le machane makhele. O mazminin erij et mishlachat le bayit shalachem. Let's out birga im nifcherim meatuol shalachem. Kol yom hayuzi chronot chadashim kumo elu. Shani odat she kita shalanu lo lam lo chekach. Vetamitihia asirit toda alihem. 
אנו כל כך אסירי תודה על כל מה שהבית ספר הזה נתן לנו. הודות לחוויות שלנו בריטריטים ושבתונים, יש לנו הערכה חזקה לתפילה, ויש לנו את היכולת להיפלל עם כוונה וסידור, לקרוא מהתורה ולהוביל טקסים שונים. למדנו בתקופות על מורשתנו, שורשנו ולקחים מהעבר, דרך לימוד ההיסטוריה היהודית והשואה. יש לנו הבנה יודע טוב של עברית, ושמענו נועים ומובילי קהילה שונים. P2G הציע לנו את ההזדמנות לפתח אהבה וחיבור חזק לישראל, ואל אפשר לנו ליצור זיכרונות וחברתיות מתמשכות. אנו יודעים שתמיד נעשה את זה הערכים שלמנו איתנו לשלב הבא בחיינו. כשאני עומדת כאן ומייצגת את הכיתה של 2020, תמיד נזכור את החשיבות של שמירה על המסורת היהודיות שלנו. אמנם למסע שלנו בגרי אקדמי היו תגמולים ואתרגים, וכל זאת הפכנו למנהיגים ומודילים לחיקוי בעתיד. אני יודעת שנמשיך לשב בחיינו את הערכים ומהמסורת הללו. למרות שבלתי חלק ניכר מחיי בלימודים מחוץ לתוכניות הרגילה, כמו בריקוד ובתיאטרון מוזיקלי מחוץ לבית הספר, אני אסירי תודה על כל ההזדמנויות הנוספות שהעניק לי בית הספר. החל מהתפקידים הראשיים מחז... במחזות זמר של בית הספר ועד לכיתה ובעצוע של שירים מקורים משלי לכל פסטיבלי השירים, נהניתי מאוד להיות מסוגלת להשתתף באופן פעיל כל כך בתוכניות בית הספר האלה. זה באמת שיפר את חוויות הגרי אקדמי שלי ונתן לי כל כך הרבה זיכרונות שלעולם לא ישכח. לכל חבר'ה כיתתני יודני שנצטער להיפרד אחד מהשני בשלב מסוים לפני שנלך בדרכינו הנפרדות, אך מי היה מאמן שנעשה זאת במרץ. תמיד היינו כיתה עם הרבה חוויות ממקור ראשון. הראשונה היא להיות שלוש כיתות בסודי, הראשונה ללבוש תלבושת אחידה מאז כיתה א', וכעת אנו מוכירים ככיתה עם חוויות הסיום היחודית ביותר אי פעם. למרות כל המחישולים והשינויים העומדים בפנינו, איננו מתכוונים לתת לכך להרתיע אותנו. אנחנו, הכיתה של 2020 חזקים, ואז רק חיזק אותנו. העולם עשוי להשתנות לנצח אך עתידנו עדיין מואר, ואנחנו ללא ספק עדיין נשיג את המטרות שלנו ונהיה מנהיגים עתידים. עשינו את זה. אני מאחלת לכולם מזל טוב ביוזמתכם העתידיות. תודה. Can everyone hear me? All right. Thank you to everyone who is here joining us today in the second round of Parents and Families. Now that the jitters are gone from my dress rehearsal, I'm ready for the real deal. Thank you to Ms. Binder, Mrs. White, and everyone who helped make today possible. I know I speak for everyone when I say how much we appreciate being able to do this. I feel like it was just yesterday that a young boy walked through the elementary doors with a kippah on his head and a bag full of dreams. Some of those dreams included playing basketball at Duke University, and some of those dreams never came to fruition. Little did he know the level of growth he would experience between those walls and the countless friendships he would form along the way. That boy was me. Hello, everyone. My name is Mitchell Margulis, and I was given the opportunity to address the Gray Academy class of 2020. Standing here today, I can't help but feel the same emotions I felt in junior kindergarten, having never gone to school before. nervousness, severe sweating, and mild nausea, but less so the second time through. I want to make it clear that these are symptoms of stage fright, and there's nothing to worry about. While writing this speech, I've struggled to put our high school career into words. There are so many people and moments that have allowed us to reach this day. But what I have been doing is thinking about the Gray Academy class of 2020, a cohort of fearless young adults ready to take on whatever the world has to offer, unless that is a global pandemic, of course. While this isn't how we imagined it, we are so glad to be here with everyone. To those joining us via the World Wide Web, we salute you in these times of uncertainty. 
We love you and can't wait to celebrate in person. Our journey at Gray Academy has gone faster than any of us could have imagined. Some of us started going to school here from the very beginning, and some of us joined later on, and some left then came back. But all 23 of us share something unique, our love for Gray Academy. One of my fondest memories of the Academy was our imaginary trip to Israel in grade three. It felt like a never ending journey of fun due to the fact that we technically never returned. And because international travel is prohibited, we have decided as a graduating class to partake on an imaginary grad trip, solving both the problems of cost and our parents' trust. But in all seriousness, Gray Academy has provided us with so much, especially when it comes to opportunity. No matter if you love sports, art, debating, technology, or mama lotion, there is something for everyone. It's what our school does best. Gray Academy is a place where you can truly be yourself, and it's unique to our school. And we have a pool. You see, throughout my extensive preparation for this speech, I found a pattern. Almost every valedictorian made some sort of comparison to their grade. So as an exercise, I decided to relate every example I heard to the Gray Academy class of 2020 just to see if anything would click. The first speech I heard compared their graduating class to the film High School Musical. She compared classmates to characters in the movie and concluded that together they form a beautiful harmonious choir. This may have been true for her graduating class, but with the exception of Jenna Buckwald and Nicola Renzen, our grade is entirely devoid of musical ability. The next speech I heard made a comparison to a book. He talked about how his classmates are moving on to the next chapter in their lives and that at the end of the day, we move forward. But why read books when there are perfectly good summaries online? Overall, what I learned is that you can't compare the class of 2020 to anything. We are living in a time unlike any other. And despite what's going on in the world, I genuinely believe that we will come out of it stronger and closer than ever. Speaking of craziness, high school was quite the ride. I wouldn't say we matured, but we did become more self-aware of our immaturity. We learn that our schmoozers accounts are in fact not endless streams of money. And we learn that when we leave the lounge a literal garbage dump, mold begins to form. Unhealthy habits aside, we grew closer as a grade and created memories that will last a lifetime through Shabbatons, P2G, Case, and many more. But none of these programs would have ever been possible without the teachers who have helped us become the young learners we are today. For the hours of extra help and years of helping us understand not only the fundamental lessons of class, but in life, we thank you. You are credited not only with our knowledge, but our character as well. Whether it's discussing fantasy football, reality shows, or the intro to living on a prayer, which is, oh, whoa, oh, oh, whoa, by the way, we appreciate everything you do for us. You have mentored us and guided us through our biggest ups and downs, and more importantly, you cared for us. I'd also like to take a moment and thank the CEOs of Sparknotes, Cliffnotes, Photomath, Quizlet, and Khan Academy for helping us get through these last few years. You were there for us in times of need, and we are forever in your debt. While Googling what a great valedictorian speech sounds like, oftentimes it read, provide wisdom to the graduates. I think it's important for me to do this, because who doesn't want to hear wisdom from a young, inexperienced 18-year-old? But believe it or not, these past 18 years have taught me a few things. To the class of 2020, hey guys, we made it, again. And I think it's fair to say that these past few months haven't been easy on anyone. And what I've ultimately learned is that growing up sucks. It really does. But over the next few years, it's what we'll do. Some of us will move away and some of us will stay right here. Regardless of that, I genuinely hope that we stay in touch and stay close. The Gray Academy experience is not bound by the physical campus, but by the unbreakable bonds that we form along the way with both our peers, teachers, and community. I know for a fact that wherever life takes us, our school will remain by our side and there will always be time with the boys. I think it's also important that we never stop fighting for what we believe is right. Just like Max Kaplan's valiant effort in never wearing his uniform, to which Mr. Van Hoof swiftly settled. I guess what I'm trying to say is in life, do not conform to any expectations or boundaries. You don't have to be a lawyer, doctor, or corporate manager to be successful. Find that thing that makes you happy and double down. Today is the beginning of the rest of your life, which is why I have decided to drop out of university to pursue a career in magic. And for the first trick, I will be concluding the speech for the second time today. There is no doubt that moving on from Gray Academy won't be easy, but with it, there will be countless memories and relationships formed along the way. All I ask is that you remember where you came from. To quote the Disney film Up, enjoy the little things in life. For one day, you'll look back and realize that they were the big things. Thank you all for listening and mazel tov to the Gray Academy class of 2020.
big thank you to Jenna and Mitchell. A history was made. We've never had valedictorians do their speeches twice. So thank you again to our valedictorians. <laughs> to all of our graduates sitting with their families, I want to thank you for your amazing patience, because now it is your turn. Something very unique and special about a Gray Academy graduation is we have a chance to honor each and every student with a special biography, as Tracy noted, written by many of our staff with information that usually is provided by our graduates. Sometimes we pull things from their ethical wills, but a chance to share with each of you in our entire community the uniqueness and how special each of our graduates are. They're gonna be coming up Usually we get a chance to practice shake and take. If any of you remember putting on graduations or coming to graduations, shake and take, you gotta like practice that over and over again. We usually bring kids in on a Friday morning. This year they get a chance to pick up their own diploma. They're gonna be standing here to be photographed. When your child is up, just a reminder, there is a beautiful orange hula hoop to the left of Andrea in which you're welcome to take a photo. Our students will be receiving two diplomas this morning, the Gray Academy of Jewish Education Diploma along with the Manitoba Education Diploma. In your program, there is a long list of awards. Many of them are housed at the Jewish Foundation of Manitoba, some at the Winnipeg Foundation, some are sponsored uh, by the Jewish Federation of Winnipeg, the Jerry Kaufman Kahila Award in particular, as well as awards sponsored by the Winnipeg Board of Jewish Education and the Canadian Friends of Hebrew University. Before we begin with the diplomas, um, I would like to ask anyone who is a Gray Academy or Joseph Linsky Collegiate alum to please stand to be recognized. So please stand if you are an alum. I can see you because I'm taller for the first time than you, so don't be shy. Uh, so please stand. Yes, those of you who got their diplomas in the first half, you can stand. So yes, uh, to all of our graduates who are receiving their bio, you are joining a long, long list of over six decades of high school graduates. Um, and if you go back even further, uh, before there was Joseph Linsky Collegiate, we have over, we're getting close to 120 years of Jewish education in our community. And to those of you who are watching from far away, uh, we might be small as a city. I don't think we're so small. We might be small as a community, but we are very mighty in what we are able to accomplish and how profound our alumni are involved in their communities, whether it's here in Winnipeg or throughout North America and even across the globe in Israel. So we're very proud to begin to welcome you as alumni momentarily. Usually we also have special guests come to present the awards with us. And because of our limitation, we were unable to do so. But to those of you who are watching live, uh, you'll let us know hopefully later on with an email. We are very grateful to the many individuals who have put con contributions forward to start uh, a fund to give an award, whether it's in honor of an individual or in memory of an individual. We are very, very grateful. So as you hear the names of awards, it's an opportunity to bring um, honor and to bring the memory of those who have passed with us. We have a new award uh, this year called the Gray Academy Leadership Award, and that's awarded to a graduating student who's demonstrated leadership skills over a number of years in a variety of areas. So to those of you who graduated already in the first half and they're sitting to my left and to my right, I know you will join me in asking Mrs. White to come back up and we will have the pleasure of honoring our graduates. So normally, we have a number of staff that ask for the privilege of getting up here and reading the bios. I've been very lucky this year because of COVID. I get to do that because of the mics and that sort of situation. And I have to admit, this has been an absolute pleasure to be reading the bios of every one of our grads. And I am looking forward to sharing, starting with Eldar Kravitz. Please come up. Mm -hmm. 
Eldar came to Grey Academy in grade one and found it tough at first because it felt like everyone knew one another already. And as a recently arrived newcomer to Canada, it felt like a strange new land. Memories of elementary school are hazy, but Eldar slowly felt more and more part of his class. He loved recess football in grades four, five, and six. Looking back, Eldar notes that he and his classmates, all who believed that they were NFL bound, spent 70% 70, 70 of the time arguing about scores and plays. Looking back at high school, Eldar felt that travel was one of the highlights for him, like the grade nine Washington trip, retreats, and P2G. Being able to spend time with his classmates and build memories all together was deeply meaningful. It also made Eldar stop to realize the value of stealth. When he finally felt part of a tightly knit group that he understood the importance of accepting and valuing yourself. Being part of a group only matters if you can also stand tall on your own. Athletics were an integral part of Eldar's high school experience. With his teammates, Eldar won provincial championships. Twice, he was singled out as the provincial finals, finals player of the game. Eldar worked hard to share his love of sports with others. He helped coach middle school and community teams and organized and volunteered at tournaments. He acted as a referee when we hosted tournaments and worked with Rady Day Camp, Junior Bisons, and Mayhem Basketball Clubs. Eldar would like to join the IDF, preferably in the Air Force. His future holds many opportunities, but he is starting at the University of Manitoba to study engineering. Today, Eldar is the recipient of the David Merrick Memorial Award, the Hebrew University Award, the Rebecca Schwartz Memorial Award. He's receiving honor roll in both general and Judaic studies, as well as life of recognition. <laughs> Kelly Manoff. Helly recalls her first day of Grey One at Grey Academy. She remembers driving to school and feeling very nervous. She had just emigrated to Canada from Israel and she didn't even know one word of English. Even though she missed Israel, she felt that Grey Academy filled the missing piece and gave her a sense of community and belonging. One of her fondest memories was the Grade Nine Washington trip. She recalls having so much fun with her friends and learning about independence. She enjoyed the incredible opportunities and was impacted by the United States Holocaust Memorial Museum. She says, it was such an amazing opportunity that I will remember the rest of my life. Helly is passionate about dance. She took dance from the age of three to grade 10. She states, going to dance was something I used to enjoy so greatly. It was my passion as a child. She recalls being invited to do competitive dance in grade nine, winning gold at the Canadian National Jam Dance Championships. Helly is also passionate about traveling and learning about different cultures. But she states that one of her biggest passions is fashion. I love to see the different new trends every year and see how fashion is evolving through time. I feel like what a person wears is one of the best ways that a person can truly express themselves. Next year, Helly plans to attend the Asper School of Business at the University of Manitoba. Her goal is to major in finance or actuarial mathematics. She hopes to someday move to Toronto or to get a job internship in the United States. Today, Helly is the recipient of the Cates Family Memorial Scholarship, the Morris Manuk and Lillian Manuk Scholarship, excellence in both general studies and excellence with distinction in Judaic studies, and life for recognition. Mitchell Margulis. Woo! Mitchell recounts, there is no greater thing in life than trying something new and going out of your comfort zone. That is why I've opted for the mindset of taking leaps of faith, whether it be clearing my mind off before cliff jumping or sparking a conversation with someone I've never met before. I feel drawn to the unknown. Mitchell's words effectively summarized his experiences at Gray. Helen Keller said that life is e either a daring adventure or nothing at all. And Mitchell was never one to back away from a challenge. Except for the time that he was convinced in elementary school by older students that were ghosts in the basement and under the manhole near the play structure. In that case, Mitchell was perfectly happy leaving well enough alone. 
From being a national level public speaker and debating to winning provincial basketball championships, when Mitchell sets his mind to something, there's very little that will stand in his way. One thing you may not know about Mitchell is that he left Gray Academy for a couple of years, but reflects that returning to Gray Academy was the best decision he made in his life. This morning, he was honored as the 2020 English valedictorian, and he notes in his ethical will that Gray Academy has molded me into the person I am today. P2G was another fundamental experience that Mitchell cherishes. He recalls when he and some other people on the delegation had a group ice bath. Considering the heat we've had in Winnipeg lately, that would likely be quite refreshing. Mitchell looks forward to attending Queen's University to study commerce. He is the second Gray Academy student to be the recipient of the prestigious Queen's Chancellor Scholarship, recognizing academics along with creative and original thinking with demonstrated leadership qualities. Today, Mitchell is a recipient of the Barbara and Raymond Kivas Debating Scholarship Award, the Sydney and Pearl Morantz Family Award, has received excellence in general studies and honor roll in Judaic studies. <laughs> Jacob Marks. Born in Edmonton, Jacob joined his class in grade four. He remembers elementary school's big celebrations like the grade six Shabbaton and farewell, as well as the joys of recess football. To appreciate how rich and diverse Jacob's interests and talents are, look no further than the activities he took part in during his time at Gray Academy. He was an integral part of the highly successful reach for the top team, played basketball, then helped out on the Athletic Council and acted as P2G chair. Outside of school, he was the BBYO Regional Mora. He volunteers at Winnipeg Harvest and is completing his Duke of Edinburgh Award requirements. Jacob also earned his National Lifeguard Certification. He works as a lifeguard and swimming instructor. Jacob feels like his time at Gray Academy has helped him develop into a proud and confident Jew. It has fed his love of biology, trivia, and making meaningful changes to the world and challenged him to push himself out of his comfort zone. Jewish programming and education were some of the highlights for Jacob's time in high school with experiences at retreats and P2G having lasting impacts. He feels deep gratitude and passion for the school in allowing him to explore and develop so much, both as a learner and as a person. Next year, Jacob will be studying in the Bachelor of Science program at the University of Manitoba with an aim to continue his education afterwards in the field of medicine. Through the U of M, he received the Girton Centennial Entrance Scholarship. Jacob is a recipient of the Jerry Kaufman Kahila Award, the Gray Academy Vision of Achievement Award, the Harry Dayan Bial Tfila Award, the Top Mark Scholarship for School Pride, reached for the Top Recognition, Student Ambassador Recognition, and receives excellence in general and Judaic studies. <laughs> Maya Polavoy. Born in Israel, Maya joined Gray Academy in grade three in 2010, without a word of English. When Mr. Paul asked her what her name was, she stared at him blankly, having no clue what had just been asked. Maya was worried about how she would fit in, but soon discovered she was welcomed with open arms and quickly invited, and was quickly invited into games her classmates were playing. These recess games are a strong memory for Maya. She and her friends would come up with creative adventures and challenges one of which resulted in the entire group taking off their shoes to throw them at a tree. Maya has been an integral part of Gray Academy's debate and public speaking programs. With her successes in this, she has traveled to Boston, Toronto, and Halifax. She represented Manitoba in the national championships. In addition, Maya has also served as chair for a multitude of committees on student council. She has acted as a student ambassador to build meaningful connections to the school. Outside of school, Maya's passion for dance allowed her to take part in the Sarah Summer High Folk Ensemble. Although she has retired from competitive dance, Maya continues to find avenues to share her passion for the art form with others. She was part of a Chai and Rizalka dance tour performing in Israel and Ukraine, and the summer prior to that, she traveled to California to compete in the JCC Maccabi Games. Maya's advice to all younger students comes from her own vast experiences at the school. 
take on every opportunity. Although she notes that punctuality was not a strength, she is the first one to speak about the importance of showing up and that it is never too late to do so. It's the experience you gain that is important, not the results. Next year, Maya will be attending the University of Manitoba in the Faculty of Science. Maya is the recipient of the Barry Bender Award, the University of Manitoba Chown Entrance Scholarship, the Ethel and William Velvel Kozak Scholarship, the Evelyn and Benny Raymond Scholarship, the Laurie Schenkowo Scholarship, the Philip and Miriam Maltz Award, the Rachel and Dove Eisenstadt Memorial Award, the Ron Silver Award, the Rose and Louis Gunn Bursary, receives excellence with distinction in both general and Judaic studies and student ambassador recognition. <laughs> Daphne Rosenberg. <laughs> Daphne became a member of the Gray Academy class in 2018 for grade 11 as an international student. She's from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. She made a smooth and seamless transition to our school, making many friends, volunteering in and outside the community, as well as joining extracurricular activities. While she misses her family, Winnipeg has become a home away for her. She is thrilled she made this decision to study abroad and is proud of herself for taking such a risk. She is lucky to have a second family in her host family, the Pauls. Her fondest memories in Winnipeg are taking camping trips with her host family. Daphne's volunteer experience is extensive both in Brazil and here. She began volunteering within the first few weeks of her grade 11 year. Every Tuesday, she volunteered for Operation Ezra, an organization through the Jewish Federation of Winnipeg that helps Yazidi refugees learn English. Her role was to support the children by creating art activities, making them laugh and feel comfortable. Daphne volunteered at Lamoud, Spirit Weekends, and the Simpkins Center. She was always available to help teachers, friends, and students in a time of need. Daphne is passionate about math and science. She loves a new challenge because she states, I can use calculations and logic. I love how I can relate the different sciences together and how they are all connected. Daphne is brave in many ways. She moved across the world to a new school, spoke a different language, and did it all with confidence and stride. Next year, Daphne plans to attend the University of Alberta to study computer engineering. She received the U of A's Maple Leaf First Year Excellence Scholarship, an International Student Scholarship, and, international, and an International Entrance Scholarship, and the Faculty of Engineering Iron Standard Entrance Scholarship. Today, Daphne is a recipient of Counselor Kevin Klein Leadership Award, the Dora and Albert Diamond Memorial Scholarship, the Ron Silver Award, and is receiving excellence with distinction in both general and Judaic studies. <laughs> Liat Schultz. <laughs> Liat started at Gray Academy in junior kindergarten. She remembers becoming friends with Ruth. She learned of the perils of recess arguments and unrequited love all the while reveling in grade-wide games of Red Rover. In grade nine, Liat made changes in what she wanted from herself and her life. She joined the Neshama Choir, was the vice president and president of her BBYO chapter, volunteered at Eight's Heim, played ultimate in basketball, and was the first hand in the air for any volunteer opportunities. She was committee chair, secretary, and finally president of the school student council. Liat also took part in P2G, an experience which greatly enriched her life. She also identified needs, such as a positive exam week stress reliever, and created a program to allow dogs to visit students as they studied at school to help them manage their worries. Liat reached out to an Indigenous program to bring those moose hide pins to her peers as a way to bring attention to murdered and missing Indigenous women. She did all of this while maintaining strong academic standing. It is no surprise then why she has earned the U of M's BMO Leader of Tomorrow Award. Liat is passionate about the environment, travel, and wellness. She treasures education and challenges herself to keep growing as a person. At Gray Academy, she found a place to do this. She says, the school is a home. It is an experience, it is an opportunity. Liat knows the importance of loving what you do and doing what you love. 
Next year, Liat will be attending the University of Manitoba in the Faculty of Kinesiology with hopes to become a physiotherapist. Today, Liat is our recipient of the Governor General's Award. Along with the Harvey and Sima K Scholarship, the Meyer and Rosalind Silver Award, the Nathan Daniel Pollock Memorial Scholarship, the Richard Tapper Memorial Award, the Ron Silver Award, the Sharon Scheinwald Scholarship, the Tom Blair Award, the William Kagan Grade 12 Female Athlete of the Year Award. She is receiving excellence with distinction in both general and Judaic studies and receiving student ambassador recognition and lifer recognition. <laughs> Ruth Sayum. Ruth began at Gray Academy in kindergarten. She became fast friends with many classmates who remain important parts of her life. Elementary school held many wonderful memories and the foundation of friendships which still thrive today. Ruth's short-lived time playing basketball taught her an important life lesson. Take advantage of opportunities presented to you so you have no regrets. Lost games and missed shots come and go, but the memories you make as you grow and strive as a team are well worth it. Although Ruth continued to play badminton in her senior year, she focused most of her energy on experiences which would feed her passion for politics, human rights, and helping people. Ruth threw herself into challenging programs such as serving as a page for City Hall in grade 11, CJ PAC, Student Council Committee Chair and Treasurer, her internship at the Jewish Federation of Winnipeg, and Reach for the Top. She took part in choir, was yearbook chair, volunteered in the art room, and was a member of the youth program Continuity Think Tank. Ruth is passionate about arts, human rights, and global politics. She loves to paint and enjoys philosophy. She would like to become an aerospace or human rights lawyer. These might seem like two divergent fields, but as Ruth explains it, in the future, people might want to explore space a lot more, which may pose a few legal issues. Even looking at the stars, Ruth's critical lens sees the possibilities and challenges our future as humanity could hold. One of Ruth's most cherished memories of her time as a student was driving all over the city with Maya, trying to find the perfect prizes to get her peers excited about student council programming and finding ways to enrich the experiences of all her classmates through her work with student council. Next year, Ruth will be attending McGill University to study political sciences. Today, Ruth is a recipient of the Blanaru Family Most Improved Student Award in Judaic Studies, the Elaine and Alan Shinfield and Family Scholarship, the Kovetsky Peer Nominated Award, the Paula and Rudy Lowenstein Award, the Rabbi Kravitz Award. She receives excellence in Judaic Studies, honor roll in General Studies, is a student ambassador, and receiving a life of recognition. Joey Smolik. <laughs> Joey came to Gray in grade three and remembers grade six Shabbaton as a turning point where he connected with classmates and branched out socially. Similarly, he recalls retreat and spirit weekends as time to enjoy the company of friends and deepen relationships. The grade nine Washington trip was another experience which has left a lasting impression. Joey notes in his ethical will that being at Gray Academy gave me the space to be creative and do my own thing, and this will shape my life from this point on. I want to thank all of my teachers and friends for being a family and for always being supportive. Joey is an entrepreneur. He enjoys marketing, network, and schmoozing. He is interested in all things financial. Joey is involved in the rap music industry as an artist manager and enjoys the fast-paced creative energy. Joy is active, enjoying basketball, tennis, and swimming, but mostly enjoys a company of friends and informal fun. He plans to take a year away from school to expand his presence on YouTube and to further his many business interests. He is opening up a clothing store on August 1st called Bape Club, based on a Japanese brand, along with managing our very own Kid Foster with his album coming out this fall and helping other local artists with their online marketing. Good luck and mazel tov, Joy. Josh Stoller. <laughs> J 
Josh is a gray lifer, having entered gray in junior kindergarten. He has many years of significant memories, but fondly remembers the grade five Harlem Shake video made in Miss Leipzig's class, and ruefully notes he was a better dancer then, and it's just funny to be reminded whenever re-watching the video. Josh is a sports fanatic. He is an extreme fan, particularly of the Jets, but more than that, he is a devoted participant. Basketball in particular has been a crucial part of high school for Josh. He and his cohort won three consecutive provincial championships and a presumptive fourth year, and he is proud of the last game in his own finals where he played his best game ever. He values the many adventures and relationships related to basketball as formative. Josh enjoys working with children at the Rady JCC and BB camp and has been a leader and mentor and finds it rewarding to make them smile. He knows that the friendships from his years at Gray will be the foundation for a net network to last a lifetime. Next year, Josh will attend the Asper School of Business and looks forward to continuing to spend time with the boys. He has received a U of M entrance scholarship. Today, Josh is the recipient of the Shelley Weiss Memorial Scholarship, the Morris Goldenberg Scholarship, receives excellence in both general and Judaic studies, and life for recognition. Aaron Thomas. Aaron began gray in grade one. A compelling impression of elementary school for Aaron was that it was too cold in the winter to go out for recess. He believes he will never make peace with winter. It is said, still waters run deep, and Aaron is a perfect example. He loves basketball and pursued it with single-minded devotion through high school. He has a string of provincial championships and MVP awards to attest to his skills and love of the sport. But he also knows that basketball is a form of expression and not the only one. In the last year or so, he has focused on another, music, and with this familiar drive has made great progress in reaching his goal of being a performer. His original music can be found on YouTube. Aaron doesn't point to many specific memories of Gray, but to the, needs, but to the need to integrate experiences and move forward. He notes that the Washington trip was when the class felt like a family. He knows the next few years are important and feels confident he will be ready for opportunities as they appear. Aaron reflects that his last year in high school flew by in a flash. He notes that, looking back on my last 12 years here, I'm thankful for it all. I'm thankful for you all. Each and every person that I've shared this journey with has affected me in some way, whether they know it or not. As we move on to the next chapter of our lives, it's important that we cherish our last moments together. Thank you guys and thank you, Gray Academy. Aaron will attend the Asper School of Business next fall and wants to be open to possibilities. Clearly, his thoughtful and quiet determination will lead to success on his own terms. Today, Aaron is the recipient of the Elaine and Alan Shinfield and Family Scholarship, Varsity Basketball Most Valuable Player, Gray Academy Peer Tutoring Award, Honor Roll in both General and Judaic Studies, and Lifer Recognition. have to share that this was the, the most amazing thing anybody could do is get up here and read these bios to you all. Thank you for the privilege of being able to do this. Thank you. This was awesome. So I would like all our graduates to stand because those of you who weren't able to see live the bios in the first half, but can I get the graduating class of 2020 to please rise? To those of you, yes, please clap. <laughs> to our graduates who just received their diplomas, you can now flip your tassel. And I'm going to have you stay seated. We're not going to throw the caps just yet because we've got a little, be a little bit uh, choreographed. So have a seat, everyone. Have a seat. I'm going to do. Uh, some quick thank yous. I don't have to, to rush as much as we did in the last uh, bit, but it is getting a little warm outside. So on your way out, please uh, help yourself to refreshments. And also you're going to get a special cookie with the Gray Academy logo on it as well on your way out. So again, I know that Tracy has mentioned some thank yous, but I once again want to thank all of the staff who made today possible. 
uh, the entire leadership team, and specifically to Tracy and to Joyce and Ira, who's here today, and Ruth and Judy and Andrea, um, and all our staff who wrote the bios, and all of our staff who contribute to making a Gray Academy experience possible. Please join me in thanking them once again. And thank you, Shayla, for being here on keyboard. I'm going to give you a cue in just a minute or two so that you can uh, head to the keyboard shortly for the recessional. In the back of your program, there is a long list of acknowledgments and thank yous. This includes many of our parent volunteers to the families who supported the graduation today. Uh, all families contributed, and we had a few families who contributed to our hydration station and being able to go live. So thank you to all of you, as well as the acknowledgments of all of our awards. So please um, look to the back of your program. And again, I want to thank Mrs. White one more time. Um, yes, please join me. Okay, wonderful. I don't think I need to add many words to the standing ovation by your graduating class that you've been with for five years. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, and I'll say it again, um, you know, <laughs> we've put on, I used, in, in comedy, I'm calling them dog and pony shows. Every time we've had to re-envision something, we call it a dog and pony show. We re-envision grade six farewell. We re-envision kindergarten Shabbat. We re-envision, what else do we need? Chagigat Hasidur online. Uh, we had our lunch online. We had, uh, what else? Pesach online. Kabbalah Shabbat online. We re-envisioned everything. Classes, classes yeah, <laughs> never mind classes online from 10 till 3 every day. Um, so to be able to envision this, um, to be able to, thankfully we all live in Manitoba, so let's be grateful for living in the province of Manitoba and the wonderful health that we've had over the last 12 days. And at one o'clock, we'll hopefully see if we've made it to day 13, but I'm grateful to live here in Manitoba and that we were able to come together outside and that the weather was so beautiful and that you were all able to join us today. And also, <coughs> thank you for your patience in knowing that you couldn't be here for the whole thing, but as I said, you will get the recording. Between all of our graduates, our community is in amazing hands for the future, and that is true of many of our alumni who continue to contribute throughout. As I said earlier, I'm gonna just sneak in some water. It's just, as we sit and look at the school building, we're usually at Eitz Chaim or Sherazedek. Um, to our students, I'm gonna, I'm going to invite you to take a look at the school for a minute. And I'm going to invite you to just think about the memories you had inside to the left in the elementary, <clears throat> to the right in the high school, out here on the hardtop, on the playground, in the parking lot. I invite the parents to do the same. There are some pretty amazing memories over your 14 or 15 years. And at the same time, we all have learned that school is not a building, and it is not a physical entity, but it is what is in the heart and the community. And I'm so excited for the graduating class of 2020 uh, because I know firsthand, and I know Daniel's here from the class of 91, that, and those of you who are connected to your classes, that bond never breaks. Even you might be distant in space or time, you may not have seen each other for years, but I can tell you that you will be there for each other in the hard times, you will be there to celebrate each other, and you will look back on this, some of you in your degrees as lawyers, as business people, perhaps in medicine, and we're all gonna look back at this time of a global pandemic, knowing how strong and resilient you were, and I think those characteristics are gonna serve you incredibly well into your future. So with that, Shayla, I'm gonna invite you to the keyboard, We're going to first do the, the hat tossing, and I hope everyone did label your hats. So we don't have, some of you are in higher locations in the tent than others, uh, but we're going to do this uh, from your sitting position. And Robin and Andrea, do you want to find a place where you might catch this? We're going to do the three, I'm going to count down, so don't do it yet, but those of you wearing bobby pins, um, you may want to remove the bobby pins. And uh, 
You know, whoever gets the best shot, if you're a parent and you got an amazing shot, then send it to us. Okay, so officially, I would like to congratulate the graduating class of Gray Academy, class of 2020. I see even Yossi's got his camera ready, so you're going to have camera on one hand, and I'm going to count down to three, two, one, but not yet. I would like you to throw your caps in the air, being so proud of your hard work to reach this moment and to usher you in into the next stage of your life. Three, two, one, Mazel tov! Okay. <laughs> so before you move, before you move graduates, go find your hat, go pick it up. And uh, guests, please stay seated. We're going to do a celebratory recessional. Um, after that, each of you are going to, uh, again, be welcomed to get hydration um, on your way out, as well as the special cookie. I want to thank you so much for coming together today and celebrating. Um, so with that, graduates, we're going to do our recessional. Shayla, hit it. Jordan. 